today is January 3rd, 2021. So we're going to still light the Christmas candle as it is still uh, Christmas tide proper. So um, uh, I, I will say to you, Merry Christmas and also Happy New Year to you. And I know I, I don't know how you all feel. I'm, I'm rather elated to get 2020 behind us. I mean, I, I, I'm just thankful not to have to be in 2020. We hope. Let's hope this is better. I, you know, it's, but I feel like it could, we could be in the middle of some biblical plague. And those things always went on for years. You know, like we, we could be in the middle. We could be in year two of some seven years. Yeah, nonsense. Let's just hope not. Let's just hope the Lord is merciful. Oh, man, we, we don't need another year like last year. All right. Um, so... Um, I don't think we have any major announcements. No live service today. So if you're watching this earlier, there no live service in the sanctuary this morning. We will be back next week. We're looking forward to seeing you if you're available. Um, unfortunately, I, I think the COVID regulations are going to kind of stay in place for the time being until the vaccine is more uh, widely spread. And let's all pray for that vaccine. I mean, I, I know... We all want it. I know we need it. Um, I feel like they, you know, they had to kind of rush through some of the testing and vetting process. So let's just pray that it, it works out for the best. Okay. Um, again, office is still closed until about the sixth. Um, so if you need to get a hold of me, please send me an email or call my cell phone. Or send me a text message. Either one of those to me directly would be the best way of reaching out. Okay, um, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks for this Christmas season and the beginning of this new year. Uh, Holy Lord, please bless our efforts this year. Draw us close to you. Help our entire nation to come through this uh, disease and to come out on the other side. Help us to return to normalcy with lessons learned. Forgive us our sins, O oh God. Aid us in our reading and understanding of your lessons this morning. Help us to be faithful and obedient servants of your will. We give thanks for the joy of your salvation. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, now, uh, our first hymn, this is the last Sunday for Christmas carols, so, you know. Um, we are going to sing uh, the first Noel 245, uh, the first and third verses I'm supposed to sing.
I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've always found that to be somewhat difficult hymn, to tell you the truth. I can't ever find my range. And the phrasing is always a little strange to me in some of the verses, you know. Also this, you know, it's Noel, which is French, right? But it's a traditional English character. Maybe we're singing it wrong. Maybe we're supposed to sing it the English way instead of Noel, Noel. Maybe it's Noel. You know, Noel, 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 born as the king of I Israel. I don't know, no, something like, I no? Okay, all right. Oh, I'll just, you know, doesn't work. just try to look for the English. I mean, it says the traditional English. It doesn't say French. That's right. So, you know, Who knows? I'm just saying. I'll do some research. You know, like that actor, Noel Coward. Yeah. He's an English actor, I think. You know, I don't, I'm just, try, I'm just asking. I don't know. Either. Well, I don't know either. I don't know. All right. Um, first reading today. Old Testament, Mr. Terrell Ray. All right. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the ends of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and the one who labors with child together. A great throng shall return there. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters, in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. And declare it to the isles afar off, and say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of one stronger than he. Therefore they shall come, and sing in the height of Zion, streaming to the goodness of the Lord. For wheat and new wine and oil, for the young of the flock and the herd, their souls shall be like a well-watered garden, and they shall sorrow no more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old together, for I will turn their mourning to joy. I will comfort them, and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The song today is number 147, verses 12 through 20, found on page 860. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. The Lord strengthens the bars of your gates, blesses your children in your midst, makes peace in your borders, fills your you with the finest wheat. The Lord sends forth commandments to the earth. The word runs swiftly. The Lord gives snow like wool, scatters hoarfrost like ashes, casts forth ice like morsels. Who can withstand its cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them, makes the wind blow and the waters flow. The Lord declares the word to Jacob, 
the statutes and ordinance to Israel. The Lord has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know God's ordinances. Praise the Lord. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us all in wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasures, which he proposed in himself, that in the desperate dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. In him, in him also, we, all, we have ob obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you, are, you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you, have, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of the inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christmas Carol, number uh, 238, Angels We Have Heard on High, I think we're seeing the first and fourth.
Carol, you know I've got a sinus infection. I'm over here trying to hold out glory. I'm going to pass out. This is great. Good grief. You did it. Well, Merry Christmas to you, too. I'll get you for this, Carol. As, I'll tell you what. That's just ridiculous. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me while I take a nap real quick after singing all that. I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, we get it. Okay. Um, whoo! The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out saying, this is he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. The Gospel of our Lord. A uh, rather long and beautiful passage. And worth noting during the Christmas season, we read it, of course, uh, Christmas Eve, because this is the beginning of the Gospel of John. Whereas Luke and Matthew go through the birth narrative, John is more interested in who is Christ spiritually, the Word of God who was in the beginning, who was with God and who was God, and that nothing was made that was made without him. And the end is that the law came through Moses, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. Vitally important into understanding who Christ is in the second person of the Trinity. He is, uh, to put it philosophically, the Word. He is the articulation of the cosmic mind of the Father. He is the, the enactment of the will of the Father. He works completely united in will and in purpose with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. He comes and takes on the fullness of humanity and humbles himself that he might save us, as Howard so eloquently read it this morning, in accordance with his good purpose. And so this morning I want to try to address um, a very complicated and old question uh, with a somewhat simple answers. Why uh, does God allow bad things to happen? And um, I don't want to be trite, and I don't want to be dismissive. Um, I know many of us, um, especially during this holiday season when we've been perhaps more lonely than we are normally, separated from family, 
and the way that uh, during the holidays, which illness and sickness and affliction uh, can, can interfere with our lives. Why does pain and suffering and bad things happen to good people and especially the people that we love? Why does that happen? Um, and so, you know, obviously tremendous books and volumes and works of philosophy have been uh, attributed to that. But uh, I think St. Paul explains it rather well here. Uh, at least in part, in the first chapter of Ephesians. Ephesians, you see Paul's great work of ecclesiology. This is his most succinct and direct and purposeful book on the theology of the church. And it's six chapters. I mean, one would think perhaps he needed something like uh, two letters like Corinthians or something to cover something as vast as the theology of the church. But Paul, although he dabbles in it in Romans and in Corinthians, um, he's really going to tell us like it is and how the church is in six chapters. And he does a good job in this first, first bit about the will of God. Uh, here's the deal. There's a lot going on in creation. There's a whole lot going on. And God has his own plans and purposes and timelines. And he says, says specifically timelines. The fullness of the times is what it says. Plural. Uh, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ. There's a lot going on in the world. And who knows in heaven or beyond wherever that God's got stuff happening. And what he's doing is is he is working for the salvation of as much of creation as he can get. He's at work in all kinds of ways and in all kinds of places with all kinds of people. Something we also need to remember that on, as unfortunate and tragic as suffering is, death is not the end. And so... When a human being dies, especially if they're a believer, it is not a tragic instance when a believer dies. It is a transition. It is a transition. One day, uh, we'll all die. That, that, that the end and the will of God is not accomplished until we all pass on and go to the kingdom of God. Death is a part of this process, and it is a part of the plan. It's difficult. Sad, it's arduous, it's lonely and painful, but it's part of it. Um, you know, I talk about my dad's illness, and I don't mean to speak too much of it, uh, it's just that it's close to me, but I know there are many others who are suffering uh, the potential loss of loved ones and who have lost loved ones this past year. And it is a heart-wrenching thing. I think of those we've lost at Cameron this past year. And I miss them. They were friends. I've been, I've been here long enough now. See, this is they used to move pre preachers. You used to move us in Methodist Church about every three years. And that was, that was good. Because if you stay too long in one place... Uh, you, you stop just being the pastor and you start being people's friend. And you get to know them long enough and then when you got to do a funeral, you're burying your friends. That's hard to do. I, I, think, I think this morning I'm thinking about Mr. Fred Campbell and uh, how good he always was to my boys and how friendly he was to me. Uh, when Mr. Fred passed, I, I wasn't... I wasn't just doing my job for a parishioner. I was burying my friend. And that, and that goes with all our parishioners, you know. Um, think about Mr. Royce. Um, I mean, I barely held it together. As soon as I got done with that funeral, I went down my office and bawled my eyes out. You know. Uh, Mr. Royce came to Bible study every week. I can't think of, of one week 
but he never told me how good my sermon was. You know, how come they have to go? Why do they have to leave us behind? We're all going to have to go at some time. Every one of our numbers is going to be up someday and we get called. The question is not whether or not we're going. The question is where are we going when we get to the other side? And God is working at work in the world every day to bring as much of us to the side of, as many of us to the side of redemption as he can. God, God didn't send Jesus in the world just to save a few of us. He sent Jesus to try to save the whole world. That's what he's doing. He's trying to redeem all of creation. And God's got a plan about how to do that. He's not operating on my timeline. He's not even just operating on his timeline. God's big enough that he's got all these timelines going at one time. And he's at work in all of them. Why do people suffer? Because the world is broken. It's not God who's making them suffer. It's God who's trying to fix it. Death is not really to be feared. I know that sounds hard to imagine. But the real question is, what's on the other side and where are we going? And what, what Jesus has explained, I think, over and over and over and over again is that when we're on this side, we mere human beings cannot fully comprehend what's on that other side. We, we can't really imagine. We're limited in our understanding. We, we can't comprehend when, when John writes about the Word and the Logos that was with God we can't really comprehend the power and the magnitude and the reality of the force that spoke all of creation into existence. That's a little above my pay grade. That's what we used to call in the Army EAR, echelons above reality, okay? Decisions get made up there that, you know, I don't have nothing to do with. But what Jesus does is he comes down and takes on humanity and tells us, if you trust me and walk with me, I promise you, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. There's something beyond what we can see in this life. Paul says it eloquently in Corinthians 13. On this side of death, we see through a glass darkly. But when we get on that other side, we will see face to face and know as we are known. The great veil and the mystery will be lifted on the other side. Hard to see that on this side. Hard to see it. And we stumble, we stumble over ourselves, scared to death. Uh, I'm scared of pain, I can tell you that. Like if I'm going to die one day and get my, pump, my ticket punched, I would prefer not to go by shark attack. I'll, be, I'll just be honest with you, I've, I've thought about it, and there's other bad ways to go, don't get me wrong. But shark attack is not my preferred method of going to meet the Lord. I read, namely because I'm not real sure what's going to come out of my mouth before I have to go stand before Jesus if, I, if the method of meeting him is shark attack. If Jaws shark, mm -mm, um, I might say something I shouldn't ought to before I meet the Lord is what I'm saying. So, so, you know, I, I, I'm, I am afraid of pain. I do not, would not prefer to be eaten to get death while drowning. Um, but I don't want to be afraid to die. Because I know, I believe firmly, I've given my, my life to this cause, that Jesus of Nazareth will be there to catch me on the other side. 
Now, I'm not saying I've done some great job and I deserve salvation. But he's pretty clear and Paul's clear. That ain't how it works anyway. He's not saving us for my sake. He's saving us because it's his will to redeem creation. And I'm saved through the faith and grace of Jesus Christ. Not because I'm worth saving, but because he wants to save creation. And he's made an offer. Good people suffer because the world is broken. And God is trying to fix it. And there's a lot of pain out there. And so, you know, you hear the other very, very prominent question, what is the meaning of life? And this sounds like some terribly complicated question that philosophers have wrestled with. And you got guys like Kierkegaard and Heidegger and John Paul Sartre and Immanuel Kant and all these crazy philosophers. And, and honestly, as much as I don't like to give him credit, it's John Calvin who figured this one out very succinctly, who says in the Westminster Confessional, and he phrases it like this, what is the chief end of mankind? Or what is the chief end of humanity? What's the meaning of life? It's to worship God and enjoy him forever. And death is just a part of that. Death is kind of the doorway by which we get to forever. Is it okay then, you know, if we're Christians and we believe in the afterlife, is it okay if we do feel sad when our loved ones die? Of course it is. You're going to miss them for a while. And if you're sad, it just means they were good enough that they're worth missing. This stuff really isn't that complicated. I mean, Jesus comes to tell us very clearly just to trust him. It's going to be okay. You know, Jesus in all the Gospels never uses more than a three-syllable word in Greek. Never. He speaks plainly. He speaks directly. And the message is pretty simple. Are you hurting? Are you missing somebody? Do you fear death? Maybe even not for yourself, but for your loved ones. God loves you. Repent of your sin. Love the Lord. Love your neighbor. And trust that Jesus will take care of you. And I'll tell you, I need to hear that message. I need to hear it here this first Sunday of 2021. Because I'm tired of being scared. I am. 2020... All we heard about was some disease out there that was killing Americans, and we lost 300,000 of them or something. You couldn't see it. You didn't know where it was. You're supposed to wear a mask. You might still get it. We're on lockdown, then they ease up, then you're back on lockdown. Maybe you can go to a restaurant. Maybe you can't. Depends on what state you're in. I'm tired of being scared. I want to live that way. And what St. Peter reminds us is that perfect love, the love of Jesus, drives out fear. I'm not telling you to be careless. Put your mask on until they tell you otherwise. But what I am saying is if the Lord calls you home or bad things come your way, don't give up the faith. Hold on. Know that God is at work in the world and he is working for the salvation of all of us. He has not forgotten you. He has not abandoned you. God loves you. So go into this year assured that God is on our side. Go into this world, into this year, knowing that God is bigger than the COVID. Go into this year knowing that God knew all this was going to happen way back in the day and he's already planned around it. And we're walking through it now 
But you got to trust Jesus as much now as you ever did. He's always had this under control. Trust God. Don't live in fear. And know that God goes with you. Happy New Year. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass us against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.